Hi friends, welcome back to our tutorials. We are continuing with our top interview question and answer series. And today in this episode, we will learn all about JavaScript's top 80 interview question and answers part one. This is part one of the series where we will bring you top interview question and answers compiled from various interviews. Before we get started, I request you friends to kindly subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. Also, if you have any queries or doubts, please drop them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you for free. Let's get started with JavaScript top 80 interview question and answers series part one. The first question is, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a client side as well as server side scripting language that can be inserted into HTML pages and is understood by our web browsers. JavaScript is also an object based programming language. The next question is, explain the differences between Java and JavaScript. A lot of people get confused between Java and JavaScript. So to, in order to clear the doubts, these are the differences. Java is a complete programming language. In contrast, JavaScript is a coded program that can be introduced into HTML pages. These are two different separate languages and are not interdependent and are not related. Java is an object oriented programming language, whereas JavaScript is a scripting language. What are the different data types available in JavaScript? The different data types available in JavaScript are number, string, boolean, object, and undefined. What is the use of isNan function? So isNan function returns true if the argument supplied is not a number. Otherwise, it returns false. Explain difference between JavaScript and ASPScript and compare which is faster. So JavaScript is faster. JavaScript is a client side language and thus it does not need the assistance of any web, web server to execute. On the other side, ASP is a server side scripting language. Hence it is slower than JavaScript. JavaScript can now also be used as a server side language using frameworks like Node.js. Well, explain what is negative infinity. Negative infinity is a number in JavaScript which can be derived by dividing negative number by zero. The next question is, which company developed JavaScript? Netscape was the original company which developed JavaScript and now there is ECMA standards through which all companies and all major browsers support it. What are undeclared and undefined variables in JavaScript? Or you can also be asked, what is the difference between undeclared and undefined variables? Undeclared variables are those that do not exist in a program and are not declared. If a program tries to read a particular value and if it is undefined, or undeclared, then there is a runtime error. You can see the error in the browser console. If the program tries to read the value of an undefined, it, the error message that comes is undefined value. Write the code for adding new elements dynamically into the web page. So this is another question tricky that is asked that is asked basically to check your understanding on DOM, that is document object model. So we can use methods like create element, create text node, append child and remove child to dynamically insert or remove elements from the web page. The next question is what are global variables and how are these variables declared and what are the problems associated with using the global variables? So global variables are those which are available throughout the scope of the code. That is, they don't have any particular scope like local or inside the method. 
These are dynamic and are available throughout the scope. We define them using the keyword var, which is for variable, var. So using that, you can declare a local variable or an object. If the var keyword is omitted, the variable becomes a global variable. Remember this, this is a very, very important question uh, often asked in interviews to see your understanding. Explain the problems associated with global variables. So the, the problems associated are if you don't handle them correctly, since they have no scope and they will be considered as global variables. So make sure that you have declared your variables in the correct scope. If you don't, then it will automatically become a global variable. So that's very important that uh, we have to consider this while defining or declaring your variables. The problems that are faced are the clash of variable names. So in a particular scope, if you have two variable names with the same name, you may end up having uh, issues in terms of uh, having clashes or the JavaScript engine uh, manipulating your logic. So make sure that you have the names clearly declared for what is a global variable and what is a local in scope uh, values. What is a prompt box? So this is another thing, simple question, which is asked to check your basic understanding. So any, uh, while you can also use something called a prompt box, which will allow user to enter the input values. So you can, you can dynamically accept values from the user using a prompt box. What is this keyword in JavaScript? Now we have seen that from ES5 and ES6, we have seen there is something called um, uh, we can refer to that particular variable or an object using this keyword. It, it is in that scope. So that's very important. Uh, it will be provided inside the scope. And whenever you say um, in scope, that means it is having uh, a particular variable is being referenced in that particular reference. That For that, we use this keyword. What are the different timers available in JavaScript? So this is yet another important question because it is asked to see, um, I'm sure if you are working with any JavaScript framework or application, you would see that you would have used. So some of the timers that are available are set timeout, set interval, and then clear interval. All right, so that brings us to the end of part one series. In the next tutorial, I'll bring you JavaScript tutorial interview questions part two series. If you have any doubts, please drop them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to help you. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep supporting me and encouraging me. Thank you so much. See you on the next episode.